Good afternoon, everybody. Am I live? Can you hear me? Great. My name is Fred Durr, and I'm the chairman of the Startups, which is the South Tampa Bay Area Transportation Partnerships. And of course, we're affiliated with uh, the Manatee Chamber and have been for a good many years. And uh, our mission in life is to support and encourage our elected officials to fund transportation projects. That's what we're all about. And uh, we've had some success over the years. And uh, I won't go into all that because we have much more important business uh, today to concern ourselves with. Uh, housekeeping item, please put your cell phones on vibrate or turn them off. I'd appreciate it. I think we should start with uh, a pledge to the flag, and I'm looking for the flag, there it is. So if you'd rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you, please be seated. It's my pleasure to make an introduction to our new Secretary of Transportation I say new, it's been since January, but that's new to me because I haven't really had a chance to, to meet Jim Boxold face to face. But Governor Rick Scott appointed Jim as Secretary of the Florida Department of Transportation in January of this past year, January 2015. And of course, as most of you know, he replaces outgoing Secretary Anath Prasad, who we have seen from time to time at our meetings here in Sarasota. Um, Jim served as Chief of Staff of the Florida Department of Transportation since July 2013. Previously, he served as Director of Cabinet of Affairs for the Florida Commission of Agriculture, and I guess that would be Adam Putnam, from 2003 to 2013. He also served as Deputy Director of Cabinet Affairs for Governor Jeb Bush from 2001 to 2002. And prior to that, Jim served as Legislative Affairs Director for Congressman Porter Goss, who many of you know, from 1995 to 2001. Jim is a native of Florida. He holds a BA degree in Political Science from the George Washington University. On Jim's appointment as Secretary, Governor Scott said, Jim will bring passion, energy, and experience to our mission of making Florida the premier destination for jobs. I'm grateful for Secretary Prasad's service and I'm confident Jim is the best person to carry on his commitment to excellence in improving our state's infrastructure in the years ahead. And then Governor Scott went on to say, during Jim's time as Chief of Staff of the Florida Department of Transportation, we've accomplished a lot to meet our transportation needs for Florida families, visitors, and businesses. This year, we made a historic investment of over $10 billion for transportation, and FDOT's five-year plan will invest nearly $41 billion in our state's transportation system. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you our Florida Secretary of Transportation, Jim Boxel. Good afternoon. It's great to be here in the Sun Coast today. Um, as Fred mentioned, I've been secretary since January 3rd, so about six months. Um, my very first week as secretary was a legislative committee week, so I did three agency overview presentations to our legislators, and pretty much every week since then has been either regular session or committee week, um, and then the fun, we weren't quite done with the fun, and so we had special session the last couple of weeks. And so um, I'm not sure if I am more glad to be out of Tallahassee um, or happier to be here with you today. Um, but I will tell you, having and driven almost every corner of this state, as, as our district secretary, Billy Hathaway, will tell you, um, driving our roads is an occupational hazard. 
um, the only way to sort of keep tabs on these things is, is to drive the roads. And so I've driven about every part of the state. This is certainly one of the more special places in the state. And I don't know that you could have picked a better location. Um, you know, if you look at the view that we have, um, is just amazing. I'm sure most of you look out and see boats and water. Um, the transportation folks in this room look out and see the Cortez Bridge. Um, so I don't know if you, you did that to, to work your way into my heart, um, but you certainly did. Um, I have to tell you, I'm thrilled to be at a chamber event. Um, you know, at the agency, we have a very special relationship with our chambers of commerce. Um, the very first big policy speech that I did as secretary was at a Florida Chamber of Commerce symposium, um, which that wasn't an accident. That was a very deliberate decision that we would lay out the vision for the next couple of years in transportation with the Florida Chamber, who's been a great partner. The Manatee Chamber has certainly been an exceptional partner to us. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with, unlike a lot of state agencies, uh, Florida DOT is in every town and city in this state. Um, and if you think about it, it's typically the major thoroughfare. And so part of what we um, work to do at DOT is understand we are at the heart of every community in this state. And the decisions we make and, and the projects that we build affect things far beyond um, what we consider. And so the Chambers of Commerce, very similarly, are the, the heart and soul of local communities. And so I think that that's part of the reason that the Chamber and DOT go so well together. Um, but I'm appreciative of the opportunity to be here. Um, it is a great time to be at DOT, as, as Billy or any of our 6,404 employees will tell you. Um, I happen to believe it's a great time to be in Florida. Um, as you all probably know, we recently surpassed New York to become the third most populous state in the country. Um, we have, are on track for 100 million visitors um, this year, which is notable because we have about 20 million residents. So on any given day, and you all live here, you know what that means and what that looks like during season, on any given day, there's five visitors running around for every resident. And so that really is um, important. And then in the last four years, we've added about 865,000 jobs. And so you're probably sitting there wondering why the Secretary of DOT is talking about those things. Why I'm talking about the importance of tourism, and the importance of economic development, and why I'm talking about becoming a bigger state. And the simple reality is that a good quality transportation infrastructure is the building block for every single one of those issues in order to get folks to and from work and hopefully get them home quicker to spend time with their family. The transportation network is critical. Um, the 100 million visitors that we have don't just suddenly appear in Diagon Alley at Universal Studios. Um, half of them get here by air, air travel and the other half get by road. And so the transportation network is critically important to that. And then obviously, um, you know, as the population increases, the need to, to expand and, and improve our transportation network is critically important. I will tell you I'm very lucky to have a boss, um, the governor, uh, Rick Scott, who is a big believer in transportation um, and fortunately puts his money where his mouth is. Um, the legislature has, shares a similar commitment to transportation in our current budget year, which ends in about two weeks. We have a $10 billion budget, which is a record for the department. It is the largest work program ever. And you can see the results of that across the state. Um, you know, we like to talk at DOT about how our favorite color is orange. So we leave orange barrels pretty much everywhere we go. Um, you may have seen them. Um, and I want to talk for a minute about, you know, we talk about a record work program and, and $10 billion and, and what that looks like. And we'll get to the local projects in a minute, but I want to talk about some of the major projects that we have statewide because I think it's helpful to understand what we're trying to do at DOT and how we're trying to put that $10 billion to maximum use. Um, as many of you know, we are beginning a project probably about a month and a half ago to reconstruct I-4 in Central Florida. It's obviously the backbone of Central Florida. If you think about Interstate 4, most of those interchanges were built prior to Universal and Disney certainly being what it is. And those interchanges are failing, which is why you're ending up with traffic backed out on the interstate, which is the worst possible thing that you can have on that type of facility. And so the challenge of redoing the backbone of Central Florida while we're on track for 100 million visitors um, wasn't something that we could do by ourselves. And so we worked with our private sector partners to do a public-private partnership. And the real beauty of this is that we were able to take projects that if we did them through our traditional bid process would take 20 or 25 years if we went through the normal budgeting and work program process. But by bringing the financial resources of the private sector to bear early, we were able to front load those projects. And so a reconstruction that would normally take 20 or 25 years will finish in six. Um, and so the, the benefit of the P3 approach there is critically important. 
The other thing is we have spent probably just as much time worrying about the impact on, on the traveling public as we have on designing the facility. We're doing all of the lane closures at night. Um, we've increased road ranger patrols. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity or the benefit of, of a road ranger. That's a service that, that we pay for at DOT. Um, and not only are they a lifesaver if you're in trouble, but they keep traffic moving. And so the, the quicker that we can clear an incident or a broken down vehicle, the quicker traffic can move. And so making that investment as we're tearing up I-4 was critically important. Um, farther down south, um, we just about a year ago opened the Port of Miami Tunnel. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the Port of Miami, um, but prior to the, the construction of the tunnel, all of the trucks entering and leaving the port went through downtown Miami. So the goal of the tunnel was to make a direct connection between the port and the interstate. Um, you know, this was another public-private partnership where we brought the private sector in. Obviously a very challenging um, project to build. We don't build a lot of uh, tunnels here in Florida, um, but what the important part that we were able to leverage there is the concession is on an availability basis, which means that at DOT we pay the concessionaire if the facility is available to the traveling public. And so about a month after opening the facility, there were some issues with the exhaust system and some other issues, um, whatever the opposite of a leak is, if water's leaking into the system. Um, but they had to close the facility for about a month, month and a half to get the exhaust system repaired to deal with the leak issue. And the good news for the taxpayers is because we only pay when that facility is available, we didn't pay. And there was no cost to the taxpayer while that facility was closed for a month and a half. And so by structuring these concessions so that we pay on an availability basis, we're able to get the maximum benefit for the traveling public. Needless to say, the concessionaire was highly motivated to get that facility repaired and reopened for the traveling public. And so if you look back at why we built the tunnel in the first place, which was to improve the traffic and the truck traffic in and out of the port, um, here we are a year later. And if you look back, what we found is that 80% of the trucks that were going in and out of the port are no longer going through downtown Miami. They're using the tunnel, they're directly connecting to the interstate, and they're going on their way. So we talk an awful lot about livable communities. Think about the difference of 80% of the truck traffic um, not being on the downtown Miami streets. And so, you know, sort of like a lot of things in transportation, if it's not a problem, most people probably don't notice it. You know, as that year has gone by and more and more trucks were taking advantage of the tunnel, folks probably forgot what it was like about a year and a half ago. Um, they had an incident where um, somebody took a cop car for a joyride, um, crashed into the tunnel, they had to close it. It was closed for about 24 hours. All of those trucks ended up back in downtown Miami, and people were reminded real quick um, what 80% of the trucks coming in and out of Port of Miami um, looks like. Um, and then finally, I want to talk about um, the port itself. And so in Miami, we just completed a dredge project to make the port um, able to accept post-Panamax vessels. When Governor Scott came to office, there was not a single port in the state of Florida that was deep enough to accept these deeper vessels. Um, and the concern was that as these ships came through the Panama Canal that they would um, pass Florida and wave as they continued to Savannah or Philadelphia or, or further points north. And so the governor made a very conscious decision that we would invest in our ports and that we would have a port that was post-Panamax ready prior to the completion of the Panama Canal widening. That project will complete this fall and Miami will be post-Panamax ready. The governor made a conscious decision. We had been waiting on the federal government to do their share of the project um, and the governor advanced the federal share with state dollars. And so we accomplished the goal of getting that port ready for post-Panamax vessels. And as our friends at, at Port Manatee and other places will tell you, the governor didn't just bet on one port. And so over the course of his administration, we're going to invest over a billion dollars um, in the state's ports. And you know, if you think about sort of sometimes hard to get your arms around what that really means. So the Port of Miami dredge cost about $80 million. Um, at Port Manatee, um, we were here a couple of weeks ago and did a, a berth that cost, from the state's perspective, it was more for the port, about $3 million. And so we have other projects that are $7 million or $15 million. Think about how many projects you have to add up before you get north of a billion dollars. And so the investment and the commitment that we've made to ports is critically important. These investments in our infrastructure, combined with other efforts to make Florida the best state to live, work, and play, are paying off, and they're getting noticed. The U.S. Chamber Foundation consistently ranks Florida's transportation infrastructure as the first or second best in the country. CEO Magazine says Florida's the number two, number two state as the best state for business. 
and Fast Company named Florida the number one state for innovation. You know, at DOT as an agency of engineers, uh, we place a special emphasis on innovation. Um, and right here in Manatee, you have a front row seat to our passion for innovation um, with the I-75 University Parkway interchange. We're going to completely rebuild that interchange as a diverging diamond interchange. It will be the first diverging diamond interchange in the state. And I can tell you this, that the project will start in August, and it will be complete prior to 2017 in the World Rowing Championships. You know, and, and the great thing about the University Parkway is that, as you all know, when you drive these systems, the state system and the local transportation system are interconnected. And we could redo that interchange and, and have a beautiful interchange, but unless the local governments were, and, and the private sector was willing to make improvements to their system, it would have been for naught. And so from our perspective at, at DOT, the most exciting thing about University Parkway isn't that, that we're bringing a new type of interchange to the state. And it isn't that, you know, we're going to complete this prior to the deadline. It's that it all came together. We did our part. The local government stepped up, did their part, made the improvements to the local system. And so it really is an example of the kind of project that we want to pursue across the state. Um, you know, the interchange is obviously a, a big project for us. It's certainly a big project for the local community. Um, but there is a lot going on at this area. I mentioned Port Manatee um, and the birth, the rehab that we did. I think it was back in March um, that the governor and I were there to open. Um, certainly that investment is paying off. And I'm certainly pleased um, yesterday, I think, or the day before, certainly this week, um, our partners at the port announced that they had secured a deal with a company to bring a refrigerated warehouse to the port. And so there is a lot of excitement at what Port Manatee is able to do. They have some challenges with their revenue that other ports don't have. And so they've been creative in, in getting that solved. And we're right there with the port to make sure that these things happen. And so whenever you all at the port and, and the commission are ready to kick off the Logistech refrigerated warehouse, I hope that you'll have the governor and I down to celebrate the success. We're certainly proud to partner with you on that and, and other projects. Um, we are also looking at, at ways that we can improve the Cortez Bridge. Um, as you all know, this bridge was built in 1956. Um, and it's an important structure carrying, um, you know, not only the residents, but the seasonal traffic certainly is a, is a major issue uh, during season. Last year, we started repair work on the bridge with the goal of extending the life for 10 years and using that time to work with the local community to explore ways that, that we can build that bridge in a way that, that sort of reinforces what's going on here in the local community. Um, I know the county is, is looking at potentially doing bus rapid transit. And so we're going to take the time to work through that project and make sure that we get it right. You know, at the beginning, I talked about how DOT is at the heart of cities and towns across the state. And to me, the more, most important thing out of the Cortez Bridge project is we started out with our own plan, which, you know, the local folks had a different view of what we should do. And the important thing is we listened and we changed course um, and recognized the importance of partnership. Um, we have other projects going on the Central Manatee Network Alternatives Analysis and different turn lane, and project, improve, turn lane improvement projects, which are all geared toward making sure that we can improve the local system and the state system. Um, you know, the bottom line is, particularly with, with the challenges that we have during season, um, there are a lot of, of issues that we have to sort through. Some of it we'll be able to do with capacity. Some of it we'll have to use um, IT and other um, <coughs> innovations to solve. You know, we're not going to necessarily be able to build our way out of this mess. So improving tra traffic signals and timing and all of those things are an important part of the solution. I want to end with a couple concluding thoughts about DOT. Um, you know, certainly I, I talked about the importance of transportation as a building block for all of the issues that, that we care about. And this takes many forms. Um, it means using our, our, the dollars we're required by statute to invest 1.5% of our project budget. Um, in, in landscaping. And typically what the department has done over years is clear the corridor, re-landscape the corridor. Um, and so those dollars didn't go very far. And so the department has worked very diligently on what we call bold landscaping with the notion that if we're required to spend these dollars on landscaping, we want them to have the biggest impact possible. So we cluster them at major interchanges and other areas where the traveling public and the visitors can see it. Certainly that is now 
worked its way up to this part of the state, but those projects really started in, in Miami and South Florida and Central Florida. And so if you've driven on 95 or 595 in Fort Lauderdale um, or some of the interchanges in Central Florida, and all of a sudden you've come up on palm trees and, and just a major, major impression, um, that's the goal of the program, which is when folks come out of the Orlando airport and they get to that first interchange, they see palm trees and they see lush plants and, you know, in their minds, that's Florida. And so we recognize that, that at DOT, we have an important role in what we do in reinforcing these larger things. Um, it also means working with local governments to explore um, additional transit alternatives where they make sense. Um, you know, I will tell you there is always more that we could do on transit, um, but the department is, is very proud of our, our record on transit. There are two major commuter rail lines in the state, SunRail in Central Florida and TriRail down in South Florida. Um, SunRail we built and operate for the first seven years, at which point the local governments will assume management of it. TriRail we continue to invest probably about $30 million a year. So if those are the two major commuter rails in the state, the department is heavily involved in both. There's a variety of other transit that we, we partner in across the state. And certainly from the department's perspective, um, having learned some lessons from TriRail and SunRail, as long as there's a local commitment, for the long-term operation and maintenance of that facility, the department can come forward and help with the capital cost. Building things is what we do best. Um, operating a, a commuter rail line is not necessarily um, our normal day job, but we're certainly happy to be important partners with the local governments. Um, it also means recognizing that, that the roads that we build and design have to be safe for all of the users of those roads. Um, the department has placed a special emphasis on bicycle and pedestrian safety. Actually, the department's champion on these issues, Billy Hathaway, is here. Um, and we have adopted the complete streets policy. Um, and in very simple terms, that means that we treat all of our road users um, with equal rights, make sure that we're designing and building and operating these roads so that whether you're on your, on your feet walking or jogging or you're riding a bicycle or you're in a car, that these roads are safe and that they get you where you're going efficiently. So I've talked a lot about DOT and what we do, but I also hope that you heard what I kept repeating, which is the importance of partnerships. All of the things that we're doing across the state with this $10 billion, we didn't do all by ourselves. So if you look at all of the modes of transportation in the state, the only two that are under the exclusive control of, of Florida DOT are the state roads and bridges. The ports are independently operated, you know, whether it's a local government or some other form of operation. The airports are independent corporations. Transit obviously is different. And so all of the investments that we make and all of the things that we're trying to do, none of them work without good partners. And so that's why I'm excited that, that my first post-session trip was here in Manatee, because I think it's a great example of that partnership in action and what can happen when the department works with our local government partners and our private sector partners to deliver these projects. So I want to thank you for that partnership. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, they have asked me to do a question and answer session. Um, I have brought an in-person phone a friend um, with Billy Hathaway. Um, I have only been secretary for six months, so if we're going to play stump the secretary, um, I figured I would bring a friend because um, there are, is still an awful lot about the department that I have yet to learn. But I appreciate the opportunity to be here and certainly happy to take your questions as soon as Billy gets up here to help me out. <laughs> No questions? I came an awfully long way. I don't know if you all have tried to get to Tallahassee. Um, there's no easy way to get to Tallahassee, which means there's no easy way to get out of it. Yes, sir. The microphone. They're going to get on to me if you don't wait for the microphone. Fred. You know, $10 billion this year is a lot of money, and $41 billion over the next four or five years is a lot of money. But I'm wondering, in your opinion, is that enough? Because my experience over the years is it's never enough, and I just wondered how you feel about that. I think that's true of uh, pretty much anything in life, which is it's never enough. I think, you, and we probably have quantified the unmet transportation needs, um, but it certainly far exceeds our, um, our resources. Um, but that's true of anything. But I think the, what the challenge that we have is to make the best use of the dollars that we have. 
which means that we can't just add lanes. Sometimes we have to rely on, on intelligent transportation systems or IT to increase throughput. It means that we have to be creative and, and look for other partners. And so at the end of the day, I think that, you know, if we had all the resources in the world, would we be as efficient as, as we are? I'm not sure. So I will tell you, um, uh, we're supervised by the Florida Transportation Commission, and they do an annual review, and they've got a, a, what I think is a very interesting slide, um, which one axis is the number of DOT employees and the other axis is the size of our work program. And so about 10 or 15 years ago, we had a $6 billion budget and about 10,000 employees. Today, we have a $10 billion budget and about 6,000 employees. And so the exact opposite, and that didn't happen um, by accident, it happened because we looked for ways to be more innovative and more efficient and leverage partnerships. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Secretary, my name is Violet. I'm with uh, Kaiser University, and I don't have a question. I'm more of a statement is um, Kaiser University is located um, east of the interstate of University Parkway, where this uh, huge project is starting in August. And I guess I'm standing here to um, to reiterate to what you said. Uh, we appreciate your partnership, and just keep us in mind when August comes in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the construction and the construction starts um, because there's a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. on the east side of uh, the interstate that are very concerned about the traffic. And for anybody that lives and works and plays on that side of the um, interstate, um, I don't call it a congestion because if you come from up north, that's normal. <laughs> but I think uh, for all of us who have moved from up north down here for this paradise and this view, forget the normal. And if we stand in traffic or sit in traffic for 10 minutes, we are in panic mode. So um, just a statement, keep us in mind. And uh, what measures have you put into place um, uh, that you can share with us to help us get through those couple of years ahead of us, a year and a half, a half ahead of us, so that the business and revenues do not suffer while the construction is in place. So, thank uh, you very much. Absolutely, thank you for the question. I'm gonna let Sure, everybody. no, that's a very good question. Um, I've been with the agency. This is, as I tell my folks, this is my third and final tour with DOT. <laughs> uh, I was first uh, in, in central office and then District 5, the Orlando area. Uh, and having been in the district for over 10 years, the one thing I can tell you is that we are much, our sensitivity to business impacts has increased dramatically over the years. And I would say, uh, I can honestly say that in terms of state DOTs, no one takes the impacts to businesses more seriously than we do. And so uh, we do a lot of public outreach during the process of, of doing these projects. We know that there are concerns. Uh, just as there are on any reconstruction project. And so we, we make a lot of effort to make sure that the contractors understand the importance of, of business access. And, uh, and I can tell you, I, I get involved more often than not when I see things are not being handled by our contractors when it comes to access. You know, putting signs out along barricades that indicate where driveway entrances are. But any time that any of the business owners in that quarter have issues, they need to escalate things as quickly as possible. And we've got people, uh, really good people in this region who will get on top of things right away. Yes, sir. Hutchinson, Sarasota, Manatee, MPO, thanks for being here, Secretary. Absolutely. Um, hopefully, throughout the course of the next few years, you'll be able to get down here as often as you have uh, in the last few months. Well, I'll certainly be back in 2017. <laughs> right, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to say thank you for um, all that the department does. We are you know, partners with, with the department in, in the transportation planning process and appreciate all that District 1 does in our area. Um, First, a comment that uh, don't let the Transportation Commission let you get spread too thin. You know, as you um, keep doing more projects, you might need more people occasionally. So uh, the, the second item is, could you comment on the uh, status of the congressional transportation authorization and, you know, what we can look forward to in the future? I know that we're lucky in Florida in that we are not as heavily reliant on federal funding for our transportation improvements as some states are? That's a great question and I appreciate it. Um, and Dale, you'll have heard some of this already. 
Um, but I think I'm going to start with the last comment that you made, which is that we're not as reliant on the federal government as other states. So in Florida, um, the, the revenues that go into the state trust fund com com comprise about 75 percent of our budget, which means that we only get about 25 percent of our budget from the federal government, and that has been going down over time. Um, I have counterparts across the country that are 70 or 80 or 90 and sometimes more reliant on federal funding. And so the, the sort of funding dysfunction that's going on in D.C. the last couple of years, while it's of serious concern to the department, it is an issue that at 25 percent we can manage. Um, I've got counterparts that, that when, you know, they do a two-month extension or a three-month extension, start planning layoffs and start planning closing down um, not only projects but different functions of the DOT. And so I think because the legislature and the governor, and this goes back many, 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 many years, have decided to diversify the revenue going into our trust fund, Florida finds itself in a position unlike a lot of other states. Um, and Billy will tell you that, that um, across the country, DOT is regarded as a national leader for the way that we build projects and different innovations that we pursue. But we are also an outlier in terms of, of how much of our budget is, is state funded. Um, you know, the federal um, trust fund is funded entirely by the federal gas tax. Um, here in Florida, we receive gas tax funds, we receive uh, motor vehicle registration fees, um, and until this year we received documentary stamp taxes um, from Amendment, not from Amendment 1, but that are now going to fund Amendment 1. And so we've received additional motor vehicle registration fees to plug that hole. But I think it is a great story. Um, you know, I started talking about how Florida had a great story to tell in the transportation world, and I wasn't going to bore you all with, with the, you know, our DOT world, but in the transportation world, Florida DOT is, is in a better position than most of our counterparts, not only on funding, but, but what we're able to do. So thank you for the question. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for being here uh, at what we call the entrance to the Barrier Islands or to Longboat Key, of which I am the mayor, or we call that paradise. So, uh, so thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to also uh, ask Billy if he could uh, respond or give us some indication of where we are on the Barrier Island transportation study that uh, is uh, currently being planned and, and hopefully underway. Right. It's well. It's not underway. Nothing moves that fast. Okay. Uh, we, you know, first of all, we we obviously got your letter, and we have uh, started moving. We'd already been talking to the city city of Sarasota about the issues down near St. Armand Circle, and so I'd been talking to my staff and gearing up for for working with them when when we got your letter. And so what I've told my folks is that we we really need to look at this at this segment of the Barrier Island from top to bottom. And so we've been in the process of developing, putting together the scope. Of course, we didn't have funds just sitting there. And as most of you know who are involved in our business, we make commitments to fund projects. So we don't just have a ton of money sitting out there available to just pull the checkbook out and start writing checks. So we've been working on putting the funding together. We've been working on developing the scope. And of course, we'll be uh, hope to have a firm on board. I don't have a, a set date yet. I've uh, one of the things I've got on my agenda when I get back to the district office next week, I've been on the road a good bit, is to sit down and talk with my directors about where we are on that, uh, on the study and when we plan to start. But we are, we're hoping to get it started, obviously, uh, before we go into the next season because the data collection is going to be a very important part of that. We appreciate the efforts and, uh, sure. and thank you very much for, for the efforts sure. and, and, and hope we can bring this to fruition very quickly. You thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Secretary, I'd like to reiterate everybody's, you know, the fact that you're down here and, and taking an active role. And this question is probably directed at Billy. Uh, he probably may have some you're more. You're a very popular man. Yeah. This is a well, good thing. I was trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Michael Gallen just took over Neil Spiritus' job probably about the same time that, uh, you know, Mr. Secretary, you came into being. And you mentioned that the uh, Central Manatee study that was out there uh, could you give us an update on that? And then second question is, in terms of the landscaping and median in front of University of South Florida, those are two near and dear projects to me. Um, could you give us an update on what's going on relative to that? 
Uh, well, the, the network study is underway. Where it is in the process, I couldn't really answer, but I will certainly get back in touch with you and I'll provide information to Michael so he can distribute it to the attendees here. Uh, in terms of the landscaping, we've been working with USF on that corridor for some time. And, uh, and again, I don't know the specifics today of what's going on with the landscaping out there, but again, I will make sure we get back with you on that issue. Hi, Mr. Secretary. I'm Sherry Croyam, the Director of Neighborhood Services under Manatee County, the Board of County Commissioners. And I wanted to thank you for starting off by talking about jobs mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to let you know you also talked about partnering on funds and local support. And I wanted to mention to you that please keep us in mind in the future as we continue to work with the Governor's Office, Enterprise Florida on uh, job creation here. Manatee County in 2009 worked directly with the Chamber of Commerce to listen to the community created a program called Jobs Now and it has both um, state support through your QTI program but also local dollars and we have right now committed over 4,000 new jobs in the area about 2,500 that have already been created at or above around 150 percent of the median wage and you're right the transportation partnerships between our public works department and the state have been very important so please keep us in mind when you're looking at places to improve because we're going to continue to grow jobs here and uh, we appreciate it fantastic that's Thank great you. to hear so in addition to our regular work program dollars that, that we use on the on the state transportation system we also have what's called the economic development um, trust fund or transportation fund we call it the road fund um, and the whole purpose of this is when enterprise florida um, or there is a company that is looking to relocate or expand and if there's a transportation need that we can bring those dollars to bear and i will tell you you know we we deal in big numbers at dot we have big dollar projects but a lot of times an additional turn lane or extending a turn lane will make a big difference to a business community and so we always look for ways to bring those dollars to bear and, and we work closely with enterprise florida um, enterprise florida also has a new head bill johnson um, the good news is he comes out of the transportation world he's the former director of port miami um, so not only does he know us very well he knows our um, funding stream very well i had lunch with him the other week and he had many many ideas um, of how he could bring um, DOT dollars to bear on the problems that he's dealing with at Enterprise Florida. And so we will always look for ways um, to be of assistance. I mean, I certainly recognize that, that while it may not be on the site selector list, the transportation infrastructure is, is one of the biggest and most critical decision points for a company that's looking to relocate or expand. Thank you. Secretary. Commissioner. Betsy Benack, Chairman of the uh, Board of County Commissioners, and I also want to thank you for being here. Thank you for the partnership. Uh, most recently, yesterday, we entered into uh, another uh, part of the contract for the cold storage at Port Manatee, so I want to thank you for uh, fast-tracking that, helping us to get that done, and which is a very important public-private partnership, bringing jobs to the area. Um, but I'm thinking about this federal situation and where it's kind of a two-edged sword, where it's wonderful that we're able to kind of control our own destiny in the state of Florida. We also um, take more, uh, I call them, they used to be called snowbirds, now they're called refugees as they escape the <laughs> cold of the north. And so we're constantly dealing with an influx of people that come here from out of state and um, where we are able to uh, take in bed taxes, no, none of that money is able to go to infrastructure as we know. And it creates kind of a, a shortfall for us in infrastructure. Is there any kind of thoughts that there might be a way? Well, you talked about public-private partnerships, and I agree those are extremely important. But it's also important that somehow we do get enough of the federal revenue to be able to solve our issues that we have with this huge influx of tourism. Well, and, and I guess I'll start with, with a little bit of my personal story. So I'm a Florida native, so I'm not a refugee. Um, but my parents were. And so my dad grew up in Massachusetts. My mom grew up in Miami. After they got married, they moved up to Massachusetts. She made it one winter. And then they um, sought refuge in South Florida. So while I, I happen to be a native Flor Floridian, I certainly am, am part of that issue. Um, I will tell you that you know those decisions are, are really more for the legislature. Um, we tend to be pretty agnostic on where the money in the transportation trust fund comes from. Um, we're just focused on, on spending it wisely and, and delivering projects, um, but certainly recognize the importance of that issue. Um, and I also want to thank you, Commissioner. I know that, 
that you are very good at making the long and, and dangerous trek to Tallahassee. Um, I have seen you up there often and, and appreciate the time we have together. So, um, you know, it's, it's not an easy place to get to, as Billy will tell you. Um, we have a monthly management meeting that we hold in person in Tallahassee. Um, so, but I do appreciate it. I, I certainly appreciate, you know, the partnership that, that we've had, not only with the commission and the port, um, but, but with you individually. And so thank you. One back here. You have to come up so uh, we can see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Lisa Bean, um, employee here at the Seafood Shack. We welcome you, Secretary, and everybody here. Thank you for all joining us. I have a question, um, may not be an estate question, but um, do you foresee implementing any boating traffic transit? You mean like uh, water taxis? Yes. So there are a couple that are actually in the budget that was just passed by the legislature, one up in Clearwater, um, and I know the Jacksonville Ferry. And so that's not typically something the department is involved in. Um, I'm sorry? We don't typically initiate those. Yeah. Um, but if there is an opportunity, um, you know, for me to pass that message along to the other, my counterparts in state government that do, I'd be happy to. Certainly recognize, you know, that, that would be a good part of the solution to some of the seasonal issues here. And want to compliment you on this restaurant. I've never been here. Um, not only is it beautiful, and, and I complimented you on the view earlier, um, but it's just, um, it's fantastic. And so thank you for having me. Appreciate the hospitality. Uh, although it might uh, not directly affect this area, can you tell me if there is a future for high-speed rail in Florida? So um, the uh, governor, when high-speed rail was last proposed, felt that that was not the best decision for Florida, and we abandoned the high-speed rail project. DOT was actually going to be the one implementing that. Um, there is a private sector company that's looking at building um, what is what meets the definition of high-speed rail between Miami and Orlando. Um, you know, we look at the experience that California is having with its high-speed rail project, which is delayed and significantly over cost, um, which I think, you know, gives us some comfort that Florida made the right decision. Um, but I am very interested in, in whether all the board can actually pull off a Miami to Orlando high-speed rail because I think it will inform the department and, and whether that's um, an option for the state going forward. So we'll have to see where that ends up. I appreciate you coming down today, Secretary. Just wanted to thank you for the Road Rangers. I had a blowout on I-4, I never heard of the Road Rangers, and they were there assisting, and it's a fabulous, it's just great. So thank you for that. Thank you. I don't know if I should tell this story. Um, it's not that flattering. So I was driving on the turnpike, and I got on farther up the road past um, the service plaza than I had thought I was. And so I had about eight miles left on my, you know, miles remaining on the gauge and was getting farther and farther down the road and not seeing the service plaza where I expected it. And so I called, was worried I'd have to call a road ranger, and I called our turnpike director and I said, so what mile marker is the next service plaza? Um, and she goes, how much gas do you have? <laughs> and I said, well, it's on about five miles now. And she said, what mile marker are you at? And she said, you'll just make it. And it literally started flashing as I drove into the next service plaza. So I almost had to avail myself of, of the Road Ranger service as secretary, which would have been an interesting um, explanation to provide. <laughs> So I, um, I now fuel up before I get on and solve that problem. Well, fantastic. I appreciate it very much, and, and thank you for the hospitality and, and for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Bill. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. This concludes our meeting, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the comments from our Secretary of Transportation. And uh, hope you all have a good week, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> <laughs>